Bank of England Governor Mervyn King was defeated for a second month in a vote to expand stimulus as a majority of policymakers said more bond purchases may erode their credibility and push the pound lower. Joining me to discuss this further is Dr Richard Wellings, Deputy Editorial Director at the Institute of Economic Affairs. Hello Richard. Richard, what do you make of the Bank of England minutes released today? Well, I mean, I tend to agree with the majority and that uh, more asset purchases would be dangerous. Now, I mean, looking historically uh, now, uh, inflation's been way above target for most of the last seven years, um, apart from a few months in 2009. So the bank is in danger of losing credibility. A lot of people in the city uh, now don't really believe they're committed to maintaining the inflation target and think they've got other motives in terms of the wider economy and stimulus and so on. So we, we don't want inflation expectations to get out of hand, so I think this was a sensible decision. And how do you think markets will respond? Well, clearly there may be some reassurance in terms of uh, the value of sterling. But it's quite unpredictable, but uh, there was a fear that um, if there had been more QE, then that would have had a negative effect on, on the value of the pound. And that, in turn, would have had an impact on input prices for, for manufacturers and, and general industry and so on. So there would have been a downside to that and, and not just instability in the exchange rate. What can we expect Chancellor George Osborne to deliver in his budget speech today? Well, I think we'll see a number of um, gimmicks, but they'll generally be small beer because the, the Chancellor is really uh, very boxed in. He has a little room for manoeuvre. Um, so the deficit still remains at dangerously high levels and the, the deficit reduction plan is shot to pieces because growth has been a lot lower than expected. Um, so you can't really cut taxes that much. Um, I mean, what what, we, what he could do is to um, um, simplify uh, the tax regime and reduce compliance costs on businesses and focus on deregulation. But that's unlikely to happen because there are so many vested interests at work in the UK who are, who are likely to object to those sort of changes. And how is the budget tackling economic growth, which is currently lacking? There isn't really that much that George Osborne can do. I mean, there may be, there may be some taxes that are entirely counterproductive and in, in that they actually, the rates are so high, they actually lose the government money. So um, possibly the 45p income tax rate may be at that sort of, uh, that sort of point. So he could do perhaps something to reduce some of these taxes that are counterproductive. That could actually, so actually reducing the tax rate could actually increase revenues. So there are uh, potential moves there. But I think really the only way out for him is uh, to focus on deregulation. I mean, that's, that's not really uh, the main focus on the, of the budget. But nonetheless, he could point in that direction and, and tax simplification would be one way to do so. There are growing calls for a further increase in borrowing to finance projects that would give the economy a quick boost. Is this a good idea? I don't think it is. And let's not forget that the, the budget deficit is still at very, very dangerous levels. And there have been uh, various uh, accounting methods uh, used to massage the official figures down uh, for this financial year. So it's likely to, to go up again in the next financial year, particularly if growth is stagnant, as a lot of people expect. Um, the problem is a lot of these projects are actually counterproductive. So if you think about green energy, uh, that will actually raise energy costs in the long term. It's actually a negative impact on growth. Or uh, public transport schemes, they will require ongoing uh, taxpayer subsidies into the future. So these things actually have a negative impact, but they might be politically popular, but they're not a good idea. In your view, what are the key issues and problems facing the UK economy now? Well, I think there are, there are two uh, major issues that are holding back growth. One of them is the sheer size of government. So public spending as a share of GDP has risen quite significantly since the late 1990s, and it's now hovering around 45%, which is far too high. And if you really want growth to get going, you want it to be much lower, the kind of levels you see in, in the Far East, so 20 25% would be a big improvement. But even getting it below 40 would be a, a good target. So... Uh, government spending needs to be cut in the medium term and quite significantly because at the moment it's crowding out productive private sector activity that actually generates wealth. And the other major issue is, is of course, over-regulation. You see more regulation of labour markets, um, a lot of green red tape coming through, which is feeding into higher energy prices and higher transport costs. And all these things are very, very bad for the economy, again, to choke off growth and recovery. Thanks for joining me, Richard. That's all for now, but stay tuned to Duke's Copy TV for the latest financial news and updates. Goodbye for now.